Over the past year or so, I've read a few books about uh, Lutheranism. These uh, first two are both by Lutheran pastors, Jordan Cooper's The Great Divide and uh, Brian W. Thomas's Wittgen, Witt, Wittenberg versus Geneva, both written from a pro-Lutheran perspective. Um, Jordan Cooper has um, a YouTube channel in which he has some very interesting videos in defense of Lutheran positions. Um, I like this one quite a lot. It's uh, both Lutheran and um, Reformed positions are defended in it. R Robert Kolb is a emeritus professor. I think the back of the book tells you where at uh, University of Wisconsin. And Carl Truman, who takes the uh, Reformed position, is this says he's at James Madison program at the in the James Madison program at Princeton University. I think he also teaches at Westminster Seminary on the East Coast. He uh, He's done a number of very good videos uh, on the history of the Reformation that you can find at the Master's Seminary channel. This is uh, a rather thick book that contains the Lutheran Confessions. Um, particularly the Aug Augsburg Confession is in there, and all, a lot of additional Lutheran historical documents. This is the book that we'll be looking at in detail in this video. It's the Lutheran Study Bible in the English Standard Version, and uh, it is published by Concordia, which is the publishing house associated with the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod just for the perspective of size comparison to show both the Lutheran Study Bible in hardback with the English Standard Version um, Study Bible. This one's in calfskin. So you see the SV is a bit thicker and longer, but the uh, Lutheran Study Bible is wider. The the Bible is nine and a quarter inches tall, seven and a quarter inches wide, and two and one sixteenth inches thick. Um, it's arranged differently from your normal Bible, uh, at least the ones I'm used to. Um, you don't have blank paper on the inside, you have prayers, you have a brief service order, and then a collection of prayers, presentation page, a single family record page, and then four colors of, four, uh, four pages of covered uh, colored maps, and then an interesting picture here of Jesus uh, portraying the events of John 2019. Come to the title page. Lutheran Study Bible, English Standard Version. It says at the bottom of the page, Concordia Publishing. And it's the copyright page. You can see that the book itself is copywritten 2009. If you look through here, you see that ESV is 2001. So, um, <clears throat> since the ESV has been updated several times um, in 2007, 2009, 2011, 2016, uh, you wonder which version of the ESV this is. Um, I was able to determine that it's the 2007 version, and I will show that um, by looking at a couple of entries in the text itself later on. There's the table of contents. There's a lot of material up front. Rather than having the helps at the back of the book, which is much more common, they are here at the beginning. So you have a list of contributors, a foreword, um, 
a page on the engravings. There are illustrations throughout the book. The typical preface to the ESV uh, features of the Lutheran Study Bible, uh, other helps like how to read and study the Bible, law and gospel, Luther's small catechism, which one doesn't normally find in a study Bible, an essay on the unity of the scriptures, um, a three-year and a one-year lectionary, uh, which I believe the three-year lectionary is fairly commonly used in the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod uh, reading plan, and then a reference guide. You may have noticed as I flip the book that there are some gray um, tinted page edges that is where the reference guide is, and those are very, those entries are very useful, particularly the abbre abbreviations when you're reading the notes. They will give you the sources that they're citing, and they will abbreviate those sources, so it's useful to look here at uh, page 66, Romanet 66, to find what those are. Uh, articles and charts, it gives you by book the ar articles that are listed. Uh, in in uh, book maps, the maps here are black and white, fairly low detail maps, and etc. Um, biblical chronology, weights and measures. So what I want to do next is flip forward a couple of pages and give you a taste for the engravings. This one is very nice. Um, it's by Julia Schnorr von Karlsfeld, and I think, if I'm reading the caption below correctly, all of the engravings are, are by him. This is based on Genesis 22, where Abraham is uh, about to sacrifice Isaac, but the angel of the Lord intercedes. Harm not the, harm not the lad. Um, there's an entry on Law and Gospel. Law and Gospel, Gospel, identifying God's ways with mankind. There's a famous quotation from Luther, uh, the law is for the proud, and the gospel is for the brokenhearted. And Lutherans uh, uh, put a lot of weight on this distinction. Um, there's a, a radio station that you can listen on, to online, KFUO, uh, from St. Louis, Missouri, which actually has a television, uh, a radio show called Law and Gospel. Uh, the topic of Law and Gospel also comes up quite frequently on a, another radio show that I listen to quite frequently called Issues, etc. I'm not a Lutheran myself. I'm just someone who's interested in Lutheranism. And that's one of the things I've discovered. Luther's Small Catechism is here, which gives you a taste for Lutheran theology. So we'll flip forward and we'll go to the reference guide, which has the gray page edges that I mentioned earlier. List of abbreviations. So, so in the uh, notes at, uh, below the text of the Bible, in the study Bible, you'll see notes that reference uh, the early Christian writer Ambrose, who was instrumental in the uh, conversion of St. Augustine, uh, the apost apostolic constitutions, etc. It goes on. I'm happy to see that Origen, the early heretic Christian writer, is not listed among the uh, church fathers. <clears throat> so we've seen abbreviations. Um, there's Uh, articles and charts. So, um, if you look, for instance, at Acts, you'll see that there is an article there on a blessed life, one on Pentecost, etc. Uh, if you remember that you have read an article on a particular topic, uh, this is probably not the best way to find it because you would have to skim all the entries under each book. These are the in-text maps, in addition to the four that we looked at, four color maps we looked at earlier. In-text maps. Place names of the Bible and ancient empires. So, um, let's do just do one of these. How does, how does this work? So, 
if you're curious, say, you happen to be curious where Jarmuth was, you would go to page 357. I believe I may have that marked. I look at page 357, and sure enough, on this map, in the upper right hand, you'll see Jarmuth. But note as well that these are fairly low de detail maps. Black and white maps, uh, not very much in the way of detail. So that was place names, biblical topics. Um, this is kind of like a uh, uh, a dictionary of different topics that appear in the Bible. It gives the biblical entries where you would find them mentioned, as well as the entries for um, notes. So here's the one on the Lord's Supper, and it tells you that the Lord's Supper is referenced in the Bible in Matthew, Mark, 1 Corinthians, oh, I skipped Luke, Luke, 1 Corinthians, in chapter 11. And then it says, see pages 1965 and 2230. If you look back at page 2230, there used to be a bookstore chain named Borders. If you, if you look here, you find a fairly extensive in-text article about the Lord's Supper with a chart down below. And I think that the key takeaways here are uh, from a Lutheran point of view, um, uh, there are two points in the words of institution which should be dealt with. Uh, one is that um, the um, what is present in the Lord's Supper and distributed and received orally is uh, Jesus' body. It's the Lutheran position. And the second point is uh, the purpose for which Christ distributed the elements. And it, they focus on the remembrance value of, of it. Um, that his body that you were receiving was given for you. So we'll go back. Still working our way through the references. Uh, now we get to the Bible itself. Uh, well, let's just show quickly that the chronology works this way. They give a timeline of history and they tell you about the major events in Anatolia, Greece and Rome, Egypt and Africa. The dates are in the middle. Uh, events that happen in Syria, the land of Canaan and Israel, and Mesopotamia and Persia. So several pages of chronology. Oh, sorry about that. Hit my own camera. We get to the Bible proper. The Old Testament has a cover page. The Books of Moses with a nice engraving. So there's uh, an int introduction to the Pentateuch. Then an introduction to Genesis. Flipped past that, I think. An introduction to Genesis several pages of text about it, and then we get to Genesis 1-1. Um, you see the first, first page in Genesis is page 12. To get from page 12 to the end of uh, the book of Revelation, Book, end of book of Revelation is actually at page 2237. So you have uh, 2200 plus pages of uh, Bible text with notes. The page thickness for each page is about 33 micrometers. My estimate that, um, of the paper weight is that it's 30 GSM. The uh, font size clear here. Font size is 
um, equivalent of about a 9.5 Times New Roman. The fonts in the notes are about 7.5 Times New Roman. There is a concordance in the back, and the font there is about 7 point. Move my book stand around, hold this a little better. Um, in terms of column width, uh, this is about 49 characters wide, which is a little wide for me. You'll notice that there are center column references here. And down below, um, it is about 80 characters wide. So you have the two columns, Bible text, the two columns, notes. The notes, uh, some of them are just generic and have no symbol at the beginning. Some of them are let off with a symbol. This particular symbol has a cross and then two tablets. Those are the tablets of the law. So this is a, a law and gospel themed note. And uh, if you look towards the end of the note, you'll see that it's mentioning God's grace. Uh, here's a note that has three circles. And that's a note that has to do with the Trinity. And it describes the uh, work of the three persons of the Trinity in creation. And then you see here a note, if I can get that centered fairly well, a note um, that has to do with word and sacrament. And the purpose of the note is to point out how effective and effectual, powerful God's word is. So those little symbols are used to kind of give you a clue as to the nature of the note. <coughs> Turn a page here and then do a quick comparison of the text with the text in the ESV study Bible. So here we are at Genesis 2 in both books. Um, because the ESV is a little closer to the camera, it will appear larger than it is. But actually, in real life, this font is a bit larger than the font in the Lutheran Study Bible. It's also a little more towards the dark gray, whereas the font in the Lutheran Study Bible is genuinely black. Um, you'll see that the Lutheran Study Bible, all in all, is more compact. It seems to have used its space uh, more efficiently, unlike the ESV study Bible, which leaves all this white space. I really do wish they had spread the references uh, so that they were lined up with the text to which they refer. <clears throat> and of course the ESV study Bible has color maps, which the Lutheran study Bible does not. <clears throat> So how do I know that this is the 2007 ESV? Well, if we look at chapter 2, verse 19, it begins by saying, Now, out of the ground, the 2001 version said, So, so out of the ground. So we know it's after 2001. If we go to Genesis 9, verse 7, and it reads, And you be fruitful and multiply, team on the earth and multiply it. Well, <clears throat> team from the 2001 and 2007 versions was replaced by increased greatly in 2011. So since it retains team, and since it's not 2001, it must be the 2007 text. Um, I've looked through the book, and the print uniformity seems to be quite good for the black text. However, this is a great unfortunate, in my mind, 
I do not know what possessed the publishers to go with a red letter text, but they did, and it's quite unfortunate. So let me show you here. Here's some red characters, and here are some from just a few pages later in Luke. Perhaps I can, without harming the book, bring it closer to the camera. Perhaps I should zoom. Zoom in so you can see. Very light, nice and dark. The hue is dark, even in the faded print to the left. Uh, you can see the same thing here at the end of John's Gospel. I don't know how well I can show that. But you can see the fairly dark print on the left and the light print on the right. So um, they chose to have red letters. They didn't print them that well. There's not very good uniformity there. Um, I mentioned the concordance. The concordance is 129 pages long in three columns. So you have a decent uh, ESV concordance there. Let me say a word or two about boundaries. Um, margin at the top is about 7 sixteenths of an inch from the gray line to the top ed edge of the page. It's about 11 sixteenths of an inch at the bottom. The outer margin is 9 sixteenths of an inch and the inner margin you can get to it at the gutter is about seven sixteenths of an inch. So this has been a brief overview of the uh, Lutheran Study Bible. I think it's um, a worthwhile book. It has quite a lot of useful information in it. It uh, is unfortunate that it's gone with red letters I've noticed that even Roman Catholic Bibles, which used to be printed all in nice black letters on thick paper, have gone to very thin paper with poorly printed red letters. And I don't understand why people do that, but they do. Um, but a lot of useful information in here, and if um, you know, if you if you want a study Bible that only tells you what you already agree with, uh, and you're not a Lutheran, then you probably don't want to read this Bible, because it's going to tell you about how Christ is really present in the Lord's Supper, and is taken orally, and it's going to talk about the importance of baptism. Um, but if you're interested in hearing other perspectives and learning about them, then uh, this could be a very useful tool.